I can remember how one of my seminary professors used to remind us in class that we cannot behave what we do not believe, that acting biblically is the result of believing biblically. In fact, he would often say that most Christians do not behave correctly because they are not thinking correctly. Well, today as we set sail back into Romans chapter 6, I want you to ask yourself this question. What does the Lord want me to think about? so that I can behave what I believe, and in so doing, bring honor to his name. Well, Paul's going to give us three words, three verbs here that will provide a path to not only believing correctly, but behaving correctly. And these three verbs are to know, to consider, and to present. He writes here in verse 6, we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, Paul's already used this first key verb back in verse 3, and he's going to use it again in verse 9. He uses it here in verse 6, and throughout this passage, Paul is effectively saying this. Listen, there's something I want you to know. I want you to have this in your mind and in your memory. And remember, that's because correct thinking produces correct living. And the truth Paul wants us to know here in verse 6 is that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing. Now, this phrase, to be brought to nothing, is from the Greek verb that means to be done away. You could translate it, uh, rendered powerless. Now, Paul's not saying that our sin nature is you know, completely destroyed, that we, we uh, now can become sinless. You can, you can try that today, but it isn't going to work. Sin, in fact, for the believer, becomes a greater struggle after salvation than before salvation. In fact, you now realize that thoughts and deeds you didn't used to think were sinful. Well, now you know they are. When Paul says that the body of sin is made powerless, you could render it, inoperative. It's been made inoperative. Let me tell you, beloved, your old self has been put out of business. It's, it's run out of gas, so to speak. Well, then the question is, why do we still have so much trouble with it? I remember years ago, uh, my wife and I were shopping in an area at the top of a very long and steep hill. And several times along the way, my wife said to me, honey, you know, we need to stop and get some gas. Of course, I said to her, Well, no, we're fine. We're not going to run out of gas. So we shopped here and there and and, and got something to eat. And then we headed back home. And she said again, you know, Stephen, we're going to get stranded if you don't stop and get gas. Well, just as she said that, we started down this hill. Guess what happened? We ran out of gas. My wife looked over at me with that, that look, and I knew I didn't have anything to say. And I just instinctively put that car into neutral And we began coasting down that long hill. We actually picked up some speed. As we coasted toward a stoplight, I I was afraid we'd be stranded right there in the middle of that that busy intersection. Uh, But just before we got to it, the light turned green. We coasted through that intersection. I was able to turn right into a gas station, and I pulled right up to a gas pump. (laughs) Did God spare me or what? Well, let me tell you, he rescues the foolish man from calamity. Well, without any gasoline, what was happening? My car had been rendered inoperative. That's the verb here. Now, suppose my car represented my sinful nature. It doesn't have any gas. The engine's really turned off. Now, it doesn't exist in that sense. But I am still sitting in the car. Now, the last thing I want to do is make that car operate again. I don't want to get out and put gasoline in it. I want to leave it empty. I don't want to feed it something that might spark it into action. Well, that's the believer today. As a Christian, you died in Christ. Your old nature was stripped of its power through Christ's death on the cross. Now you don't have to sin. 
You don't have to turn that ignition on. As Paul says here in verse 7, one who has died has been set free from sin. Verse 8 again tells us, we have died with Christ. You see, through our identification with Christ, he's conquered sin and death. The engine of sin's power has been turned off. Listen, don't turn it back on. That's what we need to know as Christians. We know we are identified with Christ in his death and resurrection. We know we are risen to new life in him. We know we are dead to sin and no longer bound to disobey. And every day we just try to keep that car, as it were, turned off. Now, the second key word here is the word consider. It's not enough to know the truth. We also need to consider it true for ourselves. Now, Paul writes here in verse 10, For the death he, Jesus, died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Now, this means that you're not out of the reach of sin. You're still facing the reality of sin, but you're no longer under the reign of sin. Let me say it this way. You're not out of the reach of sin. You're you're still facing the daily reality of sin, but you no longer have to sin. It no longer reigns over you. Now, Paul says this in verse 11. Think about this. Consider this truth. The verb to consider uh, literally means to put it into your account. Take this personally. Write this into the pages of your life. Let me tell you, considering has nothing to do with how you feel. To consider doesn't have to do with your emotions. It has to do with the truth of God's word. You've got to apply this truth now to your lives, no matter how you feel. You're going to act as if it is true. You're going to act on it because it is True. Let me add this. Considering this true isn't playing some sort of word game. I'm not suggesting you start, you know, exercising some kind of positive thinking. No, this is a matter of conforming your mind, the way you think, to the truth of what God has said. So we know, we consider, and now the third key verb, we are to present Verse 12, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present, there it is, your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who've been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. The word used here by Paul for present, present your bodies, your members, translates a Greek word that was used by Jesus speaking to Peter in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus said that if he wanted to, he could ask his heavenly father to to present, to bring more than 12 legions of angels for his benefit, Matthew chapter 26. That's the idea here in Romans 6. We, We present to God our bodies. We, we put at his disposal our members. Paul is referring here to the parts of our bodies. We, we present our body parts to God as instruments for righteousness. And beloved, that, that's really where the struggle is, isn't it? Unless we know the truth and then consider it, that is apply the truth, well, there's not going to be any struggle. We just, we just sin without any resistance. But when we understand the truth, we've come to Christ, we identify with him in his death, a burial and resurrection, and we consider that true every day. Well, that's when the battle begins. And the battle is presenting our bodies daily, completely to Jesus Christ, our master. Yes, we're, we're going to lose some battles along the way, but even when we sin against God, sin is not our master any longer. Jesus Christ is. 
So this is what we know to be true. This is what we we consider, we accept, we apply. This is how we want to live. We want to consistently say no to, to that old master, sin, and yes to our new master, the Lord, putting our lives at his disposal, living in a way that brings glory to him. So here's our challenge for today. Believe who we are in Christ and behave as we should, like Jesus Christ, our Lord. Well, until we set sail again, beloved, on our wisdom journey, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.